All right, so it's Hardcore Sustainable, and today we're gonna be showing you how to make your own uh, green cuttings of grapevines. So if you ever wanted to have a lot of grapevines and you only have one, or you have a friend with a grapevine, this is a super easy way in the season to get some new grapevines started. And it gives you a jump on the season. Normally people do dormant cuttings of grapevines, and then you have to wait until the fall, uh, keep the, the cuttings uh, dormant and stored over winter and then plant them out in the spring. This way we can get these cuttings going and get them rooted in a couple of weeks with this method. And so you can go from one vine to, you know, hundreds of vines in a very short time. If you get them rooted early enough in like June or July, then by the end of the season they can be established well enough. You can plant them out next spring wherever you want them to be in your new vineyard and they'll have a good head start and they'll be much farther along with a good root system then your cuttings will be, your dormant cuttings will be in the spring next spring. So I've been doing this for a number of years and I think I've figured out a system that works pretty well. I've had some success lately and so that's what I'm going to be showing you so you can benefit from my uh, years of trial and error. And I also tried to find a YouTube video about this and I couldn't really find anything good. And it seems like this is such a great way to start grapevines that there should be something on YouTube explaining it in a, in a concise way. There's tons of videos out there about uh, getting dormant cuttings of grapevines, but this seems to be so much easier. All right, so with these cuttings, we're starting with our medium that we're gonna uh, put the cuttings into, and it's just, this is coco coir, which is a byproduct of coconut production. It's basically the husk of a coconut. Um, and you wet it down, it <clears throat> sort of becomes like peat moss. Um, and it expands pretty good, so you don't need a lot of it. A little bit of it goes a long way. We'll just put that in our bucket here, and then add some water to it. Usually you can just leave it to soak for a while and it'll imbibe the water and it'll be a lot easier to work. This is just a simple five gallon bucket that I've drilled some holes in, not only there in the bottom as well so that it can drain water and it gets plenty of oxygen because it's kind of key to keep these cuttings exposed to air. So not only will the holes allow airflow through here, but also it'll allow drainage to happen so that they don't get uh, sort of suffocated. And this here is uh, indole butyric acid solution. Um, this is a water soluble version. Um, <clears throat> and I got this on eBay. This is a rooting hormone. And so it's simple enough to get a concentrated version of this. They also have a very diluted powdered form that you can buy from garden stores, but uh, it costs a lot more and it has a very weak amount of <clears throat> rooting hormone in it. So I just got this uh, stuff from eBay and I mix up my own solution and then I dip the cuttings into this. And the mixture for this uh, IBA is I put a quarter of a teaspoon of this 98% IBA uh, water-soluble powder into a quart of water and just let it dissolve in there. You don't necessarily need the rooting hormone, but I think that it it seems to help. And uh, since this stuff kind of smells like mothballs, I'm hoping it's not just ground up mothballs because really buying it from eBay, who knows. These are some green cuttings that I took earlier in the vineyard when I was putting up some bird netting. And these are what I'm gonna try to root. And you can collect these in June or July. You wanna get them early enough that you know the, the plant is putting them out, uh, putting enough good green growth out. The thicker the better, I think, and also the shorter the distance between the nodes is the better. Um, so like a super vigorous green shoot that's not uh, thick would be less than ideal. <clears throat> and uh, we're basically just um, 
cutting off the lower leaves and leaving, uh, I prefer to leave like, if there are these little shoots on them, I prefer to leave those as the leaves. You wanna leave some kind of uh, leaf surface area on them because that will be what they use to gather energy from the sun. And these are first year cuttings. So you wanna get this year's growth. Um, you don't want any woody material. That's kind of the definition of a, of a green cutting is that it's this year's growth. And so we're just trimming these off. got my clump of cuttings here, each with leaves on the top of them. This variety, by the way, is called Frontenac. It was uh, developed at the University of Minnesota, I think. Uh, and it's cold hardy in these southern climates uh, in Missouri. It tends to have a lot more disease than it does up north. It's supposed to be super disease resistant up north, but I think it's Probably just that they have less disease pressure up north, so but it does start really easily from cuttings I've found So we've got our indole butyric acid I'll we'll just take oops, a few of these cuttings and Drop the bottoms of them in here just the part that's going to be under underground under the medium and we'll just leave them in here for a few minutes and then we'll take them out and we'll just stick them in our soil medium here, our cocoa coir. And you really should have enough in here to um, for them to really go in pretty far. I might need a little bit more in here. So basically you're just putting the bottom of the cutting into the cocoa coir medium and uh, yeah, and keeping them separate from a, each other enough that they have a little space to form roots. Pretty much I think we're set with these. Um, I'll do a bunch more. I've still got quite a few cuttings right here, but we'll do a bunch more, fill this in. And then what you want to do is make sure your cuttings aren't too tall that you can't put a, a lid on here. and uh, you want to keep the lid on when there's intense sunlight because you don't want the cuttings to dry out. When they don't have roots, they're kind of prone to drying out. But if it's a, it's a if your bu bucket is in the shade or it's uh, you know cloudy, a cloudy day, you can open it up like this and it'll get some good energy collecting through those leaves, and that'll give it the energy to produce some roots. And you just want to make sure that your uh, Coco Coir medium is kept moist the entire time. You don't want it to be wet. It can't really get wet since we've got holes in this bucket, but you want to keep it moist. And it seems to hold the moisture pretty well. It's, it doesn't dry out super fast in these buckets. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now would be a great time to do that. Just uh, click on the red subscribe button down below, and uh, then you'll get regular updates when I post a video. It's been a couple of weeks since I made these cuttings and put them in the growing medium. And they've more or less been sitting here because uh, I went out of town. And we're going to check them. These are the Frontenac here. And then as well, when I did cuttings a couple weeks ago, I did this variety, which is called Norton. And this one is notoriously hard to start from dormant uh, cuttings, like woody cuttings over the winter. So. We're going to see how that one does with the green cuttings. It looks pretty good. We're going to take a look at these. Now, you can notice that most of the leaves fell off of these cuttings, uh, but they still are doing well. And you can see this one has uh, some roots on it. This little bud here is starting to sprout, and some of the other ones that already have more well-established established roots have uh, 
started sending out new buds. This one has some roots on it, so that one should be taking pretty well. That one's got a big white callus tissue on the bottom of the cutting there, so that one should be sending out some new roots really soon. And this is one of the skinnier cuttings, and you can tell that it's not doing as well as the other ones. This one's pretty much dead. And like I said in the beginning of the video that the thicker the cuttings you can take, the better they're gonna do. All these really thick stemmed cuttings have done pretty well. And that one's got a good set of roots on it. So you don't wanna mess with them too much. I'm gonna assume that these other two here have root systems on them. And we're just gonna leave those ones in. These ones are the Nortons and they're packed in here a lot tighter. Might take a little bit more effort to get them out. But they look pretty green. Let's see if they've got any signs of, ooh, wow. This one has some really good roots on it. And it's just a tiny little cutting, look at that. A little cutting, wow. It must be that Norton, and it's notoriously hard to start with dormant cuttings. These green cuttings seem to do really well with it. So that might be the answer. Okay, so here's a couple more with some roots on them. I would say that the Norton roots really well from green cuttings. I'm not gonna mess with the rest of these and I'm just gonna give them a chance to uh, put down their roots. All right, so it seems like it worked pretty well. A couple of weeks it's been, and I've turned uh, these grape cuttings. You know, maybe I've got like 25, 30 cuttings in here. So I've turned uh, a bunch of grape cuttings into about probably what's gonna be 20 to 25 vines. And uh, I'll just let these get some roots established. Then I will, um, and make sure that they have a shoot on them, a new shoot on them, and I'll plant them in a nursery row out in the garden, and I'll keep it well watered for the rest of the season. It'll give the, uh, the cutting a chance to put down some really good root systems. Then in the spring, just dig it up, plant it out in the vineyard, and it, it can get going for next season. It's already got a really well established root system. And uh, these Norton vines can cost like five bucks each if you buy them through the mail. Uh, and that can really add up if you're talking about hundreds of vines. And so, you know, in a couple of weeks, I was able to make, you know, like, what, five bucks a piece times 25. So that's like $125 worth of, uh, worth of cuttings here. And then another probably um, 50 bucks worth of cuttings of the other variety. So not too bad for a little experiment. Uh, so green cuttings are definitely a, a great alternative to the dor dormant woody cuttings when you're starting grapevines. Well, thanks for watching, and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time.